world is going to look like in 2030, seven years from now. There are six mega tsunami trends that will shape the future of the world. Technology, geopolitical conflict, climate change, future of work, population growth, and finally, market and economic pressure. My group scoping on the market and economic pressure, in today's world, billions of dollars are being exchanged, driven by the rise of M&A, IPOs, VC financing, PE financing, and also special purpose acquisition companies, known as SPACs. It's a lively and dynamic financial market that could present its risks, but also opportunities for all of you. History displays how successful M&As can truly pave the future and set the trends of what could become the norms today. If we think back to the mid-2000s, these years were not known just for the iPhone revolution, but also the transformation of online booking too. In 2006, the standout M&A transaction was Google's purchase of YouTube of a mere 1.7 billion, but truly contributed to Google's today's market capitalization of 1.6 trillion dollars. But 2006 was not just to be defined by this, because it was to be defined by double merger that set the tone for the future of travel industry. Priceline strategically bought and merged active hotels and booking that created and gave birth to this online travel behemoth called Booking.com. It truly set the tone of our travel experience today and defined and transformed online travel and created a value of $88 billion. Let's look at deeper into the numbers. In 2022, 3.7 trillion M&A transactions happened. And since 2017, there were 475 M&A transactions just in hospitality technology sector alone, which amounted to $53 billion worldwide. And newcomer, new innovators in the TMC universe like Daban picked up sky high valuation at $9 million. And its European competition travel park, $1.3 billion last year. Then as you can see, completed the acquisition of Agencia from Expedia. Blackstone, Starwood got together and took over extended stay in America for $6 billion. So what does it mean for all of you here, for procurement managers and travel managers? Let's bring those giant numbers back down to earth and really evaluate what that means on the ground. Our recent poll suggested that 75% of both travel and also talent mobility managers have been at an organization that is currently going through financial activities or has gone through financial activities. Now, Altavita is a technology company and therefore we try to stay on top of technology trends and it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't evaluate the power of generative AI and ChatGPT. And therefore, I'm delighted to invite a very special guest the Altavita AI Generative Avatar, Altoids. I'm going to have a mini fireside chat with Altoids. Hey Altoids, welcome to Palm Springs. Welcome to Parkercon. 
Hi Vivi, I'm Altoid, designed by AltoVita for today's presentation at ProcureCon in Palm Springs, powered by ChatGPT. I'm excited to be having this fireside chat with you. Altoid, we'd love to know what advice could you give to the audience how to realize the Trump program, mitigate risks, and capture opportunities from this lively financial market. Hopefully you'll sound more satisfying. Here are some general suggestions that travel managers can consider when realigning their travel programs to mitigate risks and capture opportunities arising from the financial market landscape. Conduct a thorough risk assessment. Start by identifying the potential risks and opportunities associated with the financial market landscape. Diversify your travel vendors. To mitigate risks associated with M and activity, travel managers can consider diversifying their vendor base. Stay informed about industry trends. Attend industry events, read industry publications, and network with other travel professionals. By taking these steps, travel managers can better align their travel programs with the financial market landscape, mitigate risks, and capture opportunities for their organizations. That was super insightful. Isn't she awesome? <laughs> also, you mentioned financial stability, right? It's one of the points. Can you please elaborate that? There are several factors to consider when evaluating the financial stability of travel vendors. Financial statements, review the vendor's financial statements and look for signs of financial strength, such as positive cash flow and a healthy balance sheet. Credit ratings, check the vendor's credit ratings from independent rating agencies, such as Standard and Poor's or Moody's. Market share, consider the vendor's market share and competitive position within the travel industry. Customer base, a vendor with a broad customer base and multiple sources of revenue is less vulnerable to market fluctuations and more likely to weather economic downturns. Debt levels. Look at the vendor's debt levels and debt to equity ratio. Industry trends. Consider broader industry trends and how they may affect the vendor's financial stability. Yes, also, finally, I think the audience would want to know how these financial activities will impact their travel technology vendors technology stack. M&A can have a significant impact on the technology stack of travel vendors. When two companies merge or one company acquires another, they often have different technology systems and platforms in place. One possible effect is the integration of different systems. For example, if a travel vendor acquires another company that has a different booking system, the two systems may need to be integrated to enable a seamless booking experience. When two companies merge, they may have duplicate systems for functions like finance, human resources, and customer relationship management. Companies must carefully plan and execute the integration of different systems and platforms to ensure that the merged company can operate efficiently and provide a seamless experience for customers. Lastly, companies must prioritize data security throughout the integration process. This includes identifying and addressing any potential vulnerabilities and ensuring that all systems are compliant with data privacy regulations. Thank you so much, Altoid. I hope you enjoyed my mini fireside chat with Altoid. My name is Vivi Himmel. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Altoid. Some of you may have heard of Altoid because we were here um, last year. But some of you may not, so I have a small story to tell. Altavita is a women-owned, women-led organization. It was the brainchild between myself and my wonderful co-founder, Karolina Sabieva. As you can see here, we're very international. We've lived in about 20 different locations across the world. I'm from Indonesia. I went to boarding school in Australia, and then shipped myself off to Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I went to university. And then I started my career in finance at Credit Suisse, bless them, um, <laughs> in New York. And then I was always curious about the world, so I asked to be relocated to Hong Kong, London. I also lived in Tokyo, in Shanghai, and I spent many hours and days and weeks in the white regions in France. So other than being obsessed with solving the messiness in the distribution landscape of hospitality sector, my obsession is in white tasting. Carolina shares a very small story. She's from the Czech Republic. She went to Sciences Po in Paris uh, for her university, and then she worked at the UN in Geneva, and then she worked in uh, Gabon, Turkey, Indonesia is where I'm from. Skip forward six years later, we're so proud to be an organization.
delegation of 87 wonderful individuals who represent 25 nationalities and speak 80 languages. Alcumita connects these amazing, beautiful homes in diversified asset classes from professionals, private homes, civil apartments, co-living, student housing, hotels and park hotels through the power of technology and we are present in 165 countries, 3,000 locations and 1 million properties. Our mission is super simple, which is to provide employees with smart, safe, sustainable living anywhere in the world with safety and security, compliance, duty of care, which we execute with 40 year quality control. The panel previously talked a lot about technology, but also the importance of human touch. This is exactly how we do things as well, um, from supplier vetting, property vetting, pre arrival inspection, as well as continuous performance. All right, this is the last part of my session. I'd love to invite yet another special guest, Jonathan Weinberg, who is a partner uh, of AGC Partners. Jonathan comes with 15 years of experience in investment banking and is utterly passionate about hospitality technology, property technology, as well as travel technology. Sure. What's working and who are the winners? Yeah, I mean, so maybe, you know, we put together a perfect couple of slides. And I mean, I think the, the upshot from my seat, um, you know, having covered the space for most of my adult life, uh, it's a very exciting time. You're seeing, uh, on a public market basis, you're seeing hospitality and technology, the way we measure it, trade at near record highs. Um, so, in, in actually trading at higher levels than b and software. Um, what's doing that, if you go to the next slide, Olivia, what, what's driving the performance in hospitality and technology, again, is really the B2B SaaS companies and the GDS players who are um, serving uh, the community, basically the community that's sitting right here on a very repeatable, very efficient basis. What's tougher today is more transactional, uh, direct consumer type businesses. You either need to be the biggest player in the space and suck all the oxygen out of the room, or you can trade at a discount to the overall market. So what, what that means from a funding perspective, right, is we start by looking at the public markets and we look at, you know, how does that correlate to the private markets? Um, on a venture funding basis, you're actually seeing very healthy capital flows and, and a high volume of transactions into companies like Alcavita. Um, and we expect that trend to continue. Uh, if you actually uh, flip to the next slide, um, just to highlight, we've been delighted to be included in the table. Um, Galpanita successfully raised Series A transaction um, in December. It's completely oversubscribed, so it's something we're very proud of considering the, the market environment. And I, I think, the, by the way, the point there, guys, is um, for innovative companies that are you know, helping you solve problems of supply and problems of efficiency, there's an abundance of venture growth, uh, growth equity funding. If you take a step further in, in my world and look at what's happening from a consolidation perspective, you're, we're on track for a record year uh, from an M&A perspective within hospitality and technology. And, it, it, and it's actually even more pronounced if you clean out some of the SPAC activity that happened in the last two years, which is frankly a little bit driven by uh, market excesses. Um, so what we expect to see going into next year is, and over the next 24 months, is close to a record number of, call it 100 to $2 billion M&A deals uh, over the next couple of years. Okay, finally, Jonathan, what is the future? What's shaping business travel and technology space? Um, I, I mean, I think a couple of things that if I'm in your seat that I want to focus on. Um, the first is the business travel is clearly back. That's nothing new to you. Um, but the second piece of it as a buyer is that the world has become much more expensive. Uh, hotel revenues per room are through the roof, which is a cost to you at the end of the day. This is true of air travel as well. Um, so, what you know, how that translates into the story for a technology company is, is really twofold. One, 
um, the end buyer of the technology is incredibly healthy, and I think that should give you a level of confidence in uh, some of the more innovative companies that you talk to as a buyer on a day-to-day -day basis. But then two, from a capital markets perspective, there's a massive amount of investor interest in, into this space. And so that creates a level of stability and stickiness for uh, everyone, uh, like, like my friend Viv here, to, um, you know, to the larger players that you might even interface with. Thanks so much, um, Jonathan. In seven years' time, your technology vendor's landscape will be completely different. Markets will continue to consolidate, and there will be continuing economic pressure. And so um, I just want to highlight that we're on a mission. In seven years' time, don't be surprised if Altavita is worth a few billion dollars. We'll have acquired a few companies, be the biggest and the most connected ecosystem in corporate accommodation. Altavita will be synonymous with corporate accommodation to safety, security, duty of care, and compliance. And we will be your strategic pillars in delivering net zero carbon emissions. Thank you. I would love to invite you to come and mingle with me and my amazing colleagues. So, Urshka is flying, flew in from Barcelona. Jessica Zanadil here flew in with me from London. And then we've got one more. Christina, uh, Christina Blonheim, who's from Houston. Thank you so much, everyone.